What's up everybody? Welcome back to another photography tutorial. I'm Corbin LaFont and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this photo right here. There's a few steps involved with making a photo like this. The first thing you're going to want to do is gather all your supplies. Now this type of photo actually takes quite a few supplies. The things you're going to need are a tank for holding the water, water obviously, some paint. I like to use acrylic paints, cups. I like to use some popsicle sticks to kind of stir it all together and then you're going to need plenty of light. Now I recommend using a flash if you have a studio situation you can work with. Another great option is actually going outside and using the sun. You can kind of diffuse the light with a diffuser or maybe even some like wax paper or something uh, just so you don't have harsh direct sunlight. That's a great option for giving you plenty of light. I recommend mixing the paint with a little bit of water because when you take the photo you actually have to water down the paint beforehand so that it gets that nice spread in the water. With this photo you're going to need as high a shutter speed as possible. Sunlight gives you plenty of light, a flash should give you exactly what you need. Now if you are using a flash, you're going to want to try to use it on a lower setting. It sounds odd because you think you need more light to get a higher shutter speed, right? In order not to get motion blur, we need the light to flash as quickly as possible. Modern flashes use a longer flash to produce a brighter light, so if you have it on a higher power setting, the light is actually going to expose for longer and it might introduce motion blur into your shots. So I'm probably going to be shooting at about 1 16th to 1 32nd power on the flash. We don't want the ISO being too high introducing noise into our shots. In these photos, you're looking for lots of crisp, clean detail. I'm actually planning to get the shot that I took today printed, um, so I want to try to keep the noise down as much as possible. One of the trickier things to find on that list is actually a good tank for pouring water into. Unless you have an old fish tank lying around, that could work great, but those use up a lot of water. Once you pour the paint in the water, you're going to have to start over fresh. I recommend something smaller. I actually found this here at a Target in town. I like it because it's got flat edges right here, as you can see, and you can kind of see that my face isn't really distorted when you look through it. So one way I test whenever I'm looking for something like this in the store is I'll kind of stick my hand in there and then I'll look through it to see if the glass or plastic is distorting it. Because if it is, that's going to mess with our images and we don't want that. Alright, so once you've got all your supplies, you're going to want to pour the water in there, fill it up. I generally fill up about three quarters of the way. Don't need to go all the way. Depends on what lens you're using. If you're using something like the kit lens, you might want to fill it all the way up so that you have the maximum area if you have to crop in. With these photos, there's nothing wrong with cropping in to find that finer detail. A lot of photos, I think, look better cropped in that way. Now, once you've filled the container with water, you're going to need to check your focus. Now, this is a vital step. Um, you're going to want to take something, I'll use a popsicle stick, sometimes maybe a pencil, something like that, stick it in the water, and then focus on it where you think you're going to be pouring the paint in, or maybe just a little bit in front of it. Because as that paint pours in, it's going to start to spread in the water. So you're going to have some areas out of focus, especially if you're using something like a macro lens. You want to get that focus set before you start taking any pictures. Once you have the focus set, you're going to want to switch your lens to manual focus to make sure that it's not going to try to autofocus when you take these shots. Another reason for this is you're going to be wanting to snap these pictures as fast as possible because you may get three or four good ones with each pour. Um, so you don't want the camera trying to focus every time. I've got a little bit of an older camera so the autofocus isn't quite as fast, so that's another big reason that I want to set it to manual focus and just leave it for the entirety of the shoot. After you're done taking these pictures, you're going to want to make sure you wash out that tank. That way you can use it later on, because you'll see that the acrylic paint will start to kind of settle to the bottom and leave like a residue. That might be difficult to wash off if I don't wash it off right away, so I recommend washing the tank as soon as possible and then heading into editing. Now when we're editing these photos, I'm really not going to do too much to them color correction and a little bit just to kind of make them pop. The cool thing about these photos being on pure black or pure white depending on whatever you want to use as your backdrop is that you can actually shift the hue and change the color of the paint based on that. I'd recommend just buying the paint that you want in the first place but if it doesn't come out quite like you were expecting you might want to mess around with the hue a little bit and see if you can find something you like just a little bit better. 
Alrighty everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this tutorial, feel free to give it a like. You can comment, subscribe, and if you want to, you can leave me a comment about a type of shoot that you'd like to see. Maybe a different photography project you've been thinking about or one that you'd just like to see how I would handle it. So get out there, try this project out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.